Welcome back, Controls Champions, to the PLC Programming Cookbook. Got another good recipe for you. This is one I've been dying to share with you. A sequence. This is the heart of the logic in almost any PLC program I write. Most of the time, there's something that we want to happen in an order. We want this to happen, and then that to happen, and then that to happen. We're waiting for this sensor before we fire this output, what have you. Uh, I, I find that I even sometimes use this when I'm interfacing with cameras or other things like that because I have to set a bit and wait for the camera to respond that it got the bit and then, you know, whatever else happens when we're triggering or when we're setting up, uh, you know, changing a job or something in the camera. So uh, you'll see this everywhere and it's not even just for normal physical machine functions like you might think for assembly or inspection. It might even be these little kind of overhead things setting something up on a peripheral device. So I have a nice little simulation here for you. This is supposed to look like a conveyor. And let's just pretend that boxes are coming down this conveyor. And that's what this gray area is here. If I click on that box, now there, there, I'm pretending there's a sensor here that says, yep, there's a box present. And if you noticed right over here, this lit up when I clicked on that. So I have a, a pretend sensor in this simulation. I also have a pusher device. So boxes are coming down the conveyor and when they get here, when they trigger that sensor, we want this pusher device to push that box off onto the next step in the process, whatever that might be. And the pusher will have two outputs, one to extend and one to attract, retract. And then it also has two inputs that tell us where the cylinder is. So I'm just gonna click through this quick. Um, I've gotta tell the system that it's allowed to run and I'll explain that in a moment. Then we'll push the start button. So it is waiting for a box. If I give it a box, it's gonna push that out. Notice our cylinder switch turned on and it's gonna come back and retract until it's all the way retracted. And this sequence, the way I have it set up, can keep running indefinitely if I give it another box. It's going to push it again. And on that extension, I've got it actually pausing for two seconds just so that we can see that, that sensor light up. So let's get out of the simulation and look through the actual code. Something that you'll find to be true in any iteration of a sequence is that you're gonna to try to have steps. Often they're numbered, uh, maybe you give them names, whatever it is. And those steps, you're gonna to wanna to keep as similar as possible. You wanna keep the same structure. So in this case, I've got step zero and step one and step two, and you'll notice they all share a pretty similar structure. And I'll talk about the differences in a moment. We also generally have permissives. When is this sequence allowed to run? I've just got a single permissive bit here. Maybe this is guard doors, E stops. Maybe it is the system error has to be on. Maybe it's the system cannot be in a faulted state, or maybe it has to be in auto mode before the sequence can run. Whatever those things are, it's nice to have a rung that sums all that up. And then what sets this sequence to start moving? We could actually trigger just on a box showing up. If all the permissives are happy, we could trigger the sequence off of that sensor. In this case, I chose to have a push button. That's what starts the sequence and then it waits for the box anyway. So we have options how we want to do that. Um, you obviously never want to start motion without the operator actually telling it to start pushing some button, having some interaction with the machine that's expected to cause motion. So that's why I chose to put a button here. The next rung here is showing that this sequence is active. I've seen some people uh, have a done bit instead of an active bit. It's really your choice, however you want to do that. I've also seen this be latched and unlatched or uh, in CODIS's terms, set and reset instead of uh, latching itself in here like I've done. So this is saying, hey, if it's ready, 
And again, that's the summation of all these permissive things that could be here. If it's ready and whatever start condition is met, that's my start push button, then you're active and latch yourself in. You may notice that this is maybe slightly backwards from our normal start condition, latch and stop conditions. And I, I'm doing this just because it makes more sense in my mind. Check to make sure it's ready and then consider starting. Uh, but it would be equivalent to put this over here as well. So let's start taking apart the actual steps now and how those work. The first step is a little bit special because it's right at the beginning. And I think that'll make sense in a moment. All of the steps, we're making sure that this sequence is active. That's that active bit that we set there. Again, this could be a done bit and then we would be checking if it's not done or something like that. And each one of these steps, if I just skip the first step for a moment, will say, hey, if I'm in this step, if step zero is true and step one is not true. By the way, these are all bits inside of a dint. Got this step dint defined up here. And so each step we know we're in because we set that bit and we don't reset that bit until we're done with the sequence. So as this marches forward in the sequence, we're gonna see step one lights up or step zero lights up and then step one lights up, step zero will still be lit up and you'll just see kind of a line of blue show up down the line here. And that may be one convenience about this kind of programming is you can visually see it like that. I know that uh, that helps some people understand where they are in the sequence. So uh, that basic structure again is, okay, we're active, we're in this step and we have not made it to the next step yet. Okay, after that is where the steps actually start to have meaning. In some cases, we've got an output going. In most cases, we're checking for an input or some other condition to make sure that we're ready to go on to the next step. So step zero is just a dummy step saying if we haven't set step zero yet, then go ahead and st set step zero. You could do some actual work here, but this is how I've chosen to lay it out in this case. The next thing we're waiting for a box to be present. So, hey, has a box showed up here that's ready to be pushed. After a box is there, then I'm going to set step one and we're ready to do the next thing. So now if step one is true, and we haven't made it to step two yet. Once the step one is set, this rung is no longer, this path does not conduct anymore because this contact will be false. And that's true down the line. We, we're only active in one rung at a time. And that is uh, very standard for any sequence structure that you'll see out there. After there's a box there, step one happens. Okay, we're on this rung now. Okay, we're going to start sending this output, the little O for output, uh, pusher extend. So we're gonna start extending this pusher. Now I've created some logic in the background that times that pusher extend and retract and helps this move and stuff. I'll show you briefly what it looks like. I'm not gonna go over this right now. I just want you to know it exists. That's where this is coming from. That's what's lighting up these indicators and moving that pusher. So we're just going to pretend that things that start with I here are actual inputs from real sensors and things that start with O are actual outputs to real valves that are firing the cylinder. Okay, so we extend that cylinder until we see the cylinder extended switch. That means it's done with its motion because it will take some time to do that motion. And that's not just because I'm simulating it, that's obviously true for anything in reality. And this is very commonly what we want to do, even if we're indexing a servo or uh, telling a robot to go do something, we tell it to do something and then we wait for it to tell us we're, uh, that it's done, or at least tell us that it received the message so we can go on and do the next thing. Okay, so we told the pusher to extend. We found that it got there. Now we're ready to go to step two. We set step two. Here we are in step two. Now we're going to set a dwell timer. And again, I, I put this two second timer in here 
just so that we, it will wait at the extended position so that we can see that this light lights up, this uh, cylinder sensor. It's not really necessary for the, the physical process that we're trying to model here. That's just for our convenience in being able to see it. So, okay, we got that timer runs for two seconds. When that timer's done, then we can go to step three. When we get to step three, we're gonna fire another output. This is the retract output to try and bring this cylinder back in. We're gonna wait until that gets there. We've got a sensor that tells us that it got there. Then we go to step four. And in step four, this is another special run. We're just clearing out the sequence. So there are two ways that we could treat this. And the way I've modeled here is the simplest. At the end of the sequence, at some point, we have to say that the sequence is done. We have to clear all of these step bits because we've just been setting them. We haven't been resetting them. So this is one way to do that. The move instruction is assignment. It means I'm gonna take this thing and put it into this thing. I'm gonna set step to equal zero. And that means we're also clearing out all these bits because all these bits are part of step that didn't. The thing that I didn't do in this rung that I could have done and probably more often do do is set the active bit to false. Because right now, if, if this is running, we're in step four, this is active. By the way, there is no step five right now, so this really isn't necessary, but it's not hurting anything. It's just kind of a copy paste uh, carryover. Um, so I'm, I'm setting this to zero, I'm clearing it out, but I'm not telling it to stop running the sequence because this is still active. So I could also put another branch in here and turn active off. And if I were gonna do that, then I would also want this active instead of latching itself in, I would want this to be a set coil. And I would delete this active branch here. And then this would be a reset active. But I'm not gonna do that right now because I'm happy with this to keep on running every time it sees a package. Instead here, what I might do is uh, to fit this function a little bit better, maybe I would put a stop push button in here. So that would look like That would look something like that. And then I would draw another push button on here just for the simulation. But I'm not gonna do that either. That's just an example. Okay, so now that we've talked about how this runs, why don't we simulate again and see what it looks like on the insides. I'm gonna just reset this whole thing set my permissive to true. Again, that's guard doors are closed or e-stops are happy or, or we're in auto mode or whatever those permissives are. Okay, I see we're ready now. It's waiting on me to push the start button and then we'll go to active. Okay, we're active now. And now it's waiting for a box. So notice we are in step zero. I'm gonna give it a box and then this will be true. So we'll get to step one and then we're gonna start pushing and we're pushing we got there okay notice how these are lighting up and making a big blue line while they're going down we just finished i'm gonna give it another box boom 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 and done and that's really the basics of a sequence this is very simple it's uh I would say this is a pretty common way to do it. It's a little bit old school. I don't personally like it, but I want you to see it because you're, you're gonna see it and you need to be able to recognize it. The reasons I don't like it, let me come back out of simulation here. The reasons I don't like it is that it's inflexible. So here I have step zero and step one and step two. What happens if I decide I need a step 1.5? There isn't really a good way to do that. I could just grab the next available bit number. In this case, uh, you know, bit five or maybe bit six. I don't have a step five or six right now. I could put that in there, but then the numbers don't line up and 
personally, I think that would be confusing and frustrating to try and look at and debug. Um, and then, so what, what if we went through and we said, okay, well, here's step zero and then here's step five and here's step 10 and we labeled it with space, we could certainly do that, but we're gonna run out pretty fast because we only have 32 bits to work with. This is a dent. And uh, you know we can always find more bits. We could have a step one and step two and step three, but that also ends up getting a little bit cumbersome, I think. So in the next couple of videos, I'm gonna present to you a couple more ways to do sequences. And again, I'll talk about the strengths and weaknesses of each. Another thing I wanna point out before I leave here is this is not really robust the way it is right now. And it's just because it's an example, it's not because of this type of structure. This type of structure can be robust. Right now, if there were a fault or if I decide to uh, clear the permissive, this just stops wherever it is. The step bits aren't cleared out. So in a, in a real situation, you know, maybe I'm happy with this machine just starting back up wherever it left off. For example, uh, simulate again. Let's give this a box and then halfway through running, I'm gonna kill the permissive. Notice it still remembers where it is. So if I start it up again, it's just gonna pick up where it left off. And in this case, I do want this to retract. That's a good thing. If I clear the sequence entirely, now I'm gonna to have to have some sort of all retract function or reset the machine function or something like that. But I want you to be aware of this because you don't always want the process to pick up exactly where it was. So if I did want this to clear, then I would be watching somewhere. I would make another rung, come back at a simulation. I would make another rung that said if if not active, then oops, selected too much there. If not active, then move zero into step. And that's just another uh, a way to catch that situation because we'll stop being active if we're not ready and we're not ready if the permissives aren't true. So I hope that didn't seem too complicated. The intent, like I say, with any sequence is for rungs to be as similar as possible for each step that we're working with. And so we try to follow the same structure over and over again. Obviously, some are a little bit simpler than others. Um, but once you train your eye to this pattern, it becomes very easy to read it. And that may be the hardest part about becoming a good PLC programmer is training your eye to these patterns. But once you do that, you're gonna be able to read through these so fast. So get out there, give it a try. Tell me what you think. Again, I will be uh, giving you the download link for this file. It's in Codasys. You can download Codasys for free. Try this out for yourself. Follow along. That's uh, it's the best way to learn. And yeah, let, uh, let me know in the comments what you think, questions, comments. I'm very interested in hearing what you have to say. Keep on reaching. Thanks for watching. If there's one thing I like more than making these videos, it's hearing what you have to say about them. So um, leave a comment, share, like, or subscribe. Ooh.